Hello YouTube friends, Dr. Teresa here again with you. Today I'm going to show you my process for preparing frozen mice shrimp for my large seahorses. So first thing I do is I get a small container that um, I can use to hold the shrimp and then put it in the refrigerator. It has a lid. And then I get my flat of frozen mice shrimp. There are different brands. This is the brand I'm using this time. And I plan to alternate brands just to give the seahorses variety. And um, you'll notice that this is what they call a flat pack. And it looks like it's 16 ounces. Uh, it would be more convenient to have the little cubes, but there are several times the cost. And because I will be using a lot to feed, you know, to feed the seahorses over time, it's just more economical for me to get the flat pack. It is a little bit more difficult then to get the shrimp that I need. But what I do is basically when the shrimp is still in its pack, I just break off a little bit. And I only want a little bit because I don't want to defrost too much at a time. So once I break off my little piece, and you can see that this piece is really quite tiny, I am going to put it in my container. After I break off the chunk of frozen shrimp, I place the rest of the packet back in the freezer, and then I grab a device I've been using just for the seahorse tank. It's actually an old, I guess, creamer back in the day when people used to serve cream or milk with their tea when we were all fancy instead of just pouring right out of containers. Um, I like this because it has a spout for pouring. Uh, it's small and easy to handle. So next, I'll just do a quick view of the seahorses if we can see what they're up to here. Well, it looks like they're hiding pretty well right now. Oh, they are hiding very well. Oh, let me move to the side so we can see one in the back here. Here's one. That's our male. And I open up the lid. Oops. And then I just dip in my mini pitcher, more or less, is what it is. And I fill it up. I don't need that much. About quarter of the way, third of the way. Close my lid, and I'm going to be pouring that back into the shrimps. Okay, so now I have the water from the tank. I'm going to pour it into my cup and I'm going to use that process to start defrosting the shrimp. I'll add a little bit more. Might as well fill it up. And it's really important to use tank water or at least other salt water mix. If you don't use salt water to defrost the shrimp, then when you're ready to add them to the tank, they float and go all over the place and make a mess. And the method I use is putting the shrimp in at a feeding station, so naturally I don't want that to happen. So after this, I'm going to put the cover on and put the shrimp in the refrigerator for a while. Once the shrimp has had a chance to defrost, I pour a little bit into a fishnet, not too much, enough that I think will be good for feeding. It always looks like a smaller amount than it actually is when it's added to the tank. Then I need to rinse this. So I'm going to put this under some cold water. And when I'm finished rinsing, I'm going to take the net and flip it upside down. And I'm going to dip the shrimp into that same little creamer or mini pitcher that I used before. And this is what I'm going to add to the seahorse tank. 
This is salt water that I took from the tank once again. And now I'm ready to add the defrosted, well-rinsed shrimp into the seahorse tank. I have there what looks like a shell. It's actually a piece of plastic my husband and I put together that we found at a secondhand shop, or um, I can't think of the other word, a thrift shop. And he drilled a hole into the bottom of the cup that's attached to the shell. And then we were able to attach the plastic plants and then put some rocks in there to weight it down and to add decoration. So this shell is acting as a feeding station. For the large seahorses, it's really good to target a single area where um, shrimp is going to be placed so it doesn't blow all over the place and the seahorses know exactly where to go to get the shrimp. So let's see how they do. I'm going to use this tube. Uh, let's see if you can see it. I'm going to get a little distance here. And basically, I'm going to put this tube in the water, and then I'm going to take my pitcher or um, creamer of shrimp, and I'm going to pour it right into the tube. And I may have to add more water. Some of the shrimp may stick to the pitcher um, after I pour it in the first time. But I'm going to set the camera down now because I'm going to need my two hands, and I'm going to see if I can position it in a way that you can see the shrimp coming down the tube. So let me lift the lid. And there you can see the tube there. And now I'm going to take the shrimp and I'm going to pour it in the tube. And what will happen is the shrimp will start to sink down to the bottom of the tube. I'm going to pour a little bit more water in here. And let me see if I can get a close up so you can see the shrimp going down. It doesn't look like a ton of shrimp, but it's a late night feeding for the seahorses, so I don't want to put a lot of shrimp in their dish right now. We'll see if they end up eating this. But if they're paying attention, they actually watch the shrimp go down the tube and they get excited knowing that it's their food. And sometimes they start, start snapping at the tube because they see the shrimp moving and they want to get at it as soon as possible. I'm going to leave the tube here for another few seconds. I have a little bit more shrimp that's still coming down the tube. And as soon as I move the tube, the shrimp that's sitting at the bottom, it's going to move around a little bit. And there is a little bit of a pressure still of the shrimp coming down, and that's going to cause the shrimp in the dish to move a little bit. In order to do this successfully, I have to have my, uh, excuse me, my filter. I have a canister filter. I have to have it on um, half level flow or half power so that the shrimp doesn't blow around and then usually at night I turn the full power back on. All right, I'm going to move the tube a little bit so that a couple of shrimp can continue coming down without disturbing or creating currents that will pull the other shrimp out. Oh, you can see one seahorse is kind of peeking. That seahorse is realizing some food is coming down. All right, and then very slowly, I'm going to lift my tube. And this is just a regular aquarium tube, um, a lot of times used for uplift tubes. I'm taking it out very carefully. And let me get a close up of the food. And it's sitting there nicely in the dish. It's not getting blown around. You might have some little teeny tiny stray pieces that blow around, but that's not so bad. The snails will clear that up or it'll go into the sponge intakes. I think the seahorse is debating what to do. Oh, he knows that there is shrimp there. The seahorses have been really well fed today. 
so they may not be coming right away for their food. But normally on a work day, if I don't get a chance to feed them in the middle of the day, they'll come to the tube. So we'll get another video where we feed them and we can see them both. There's two seahorses in there, a male and a female. We'll see them both start moving towards the dish and eating out of the dish, which is really fun. There's the female. I think I have come to name these two. I am a fan of Pirates of the Caribbean, so we have Captain Jack and his mate Pearl. All right, well, it doesn't look like they're going to, um, oh, she's going to snap a shrimp that's loose. Or she was going to try to. It doesn't look like they're going to be gathering at the dish for this video. If they do, I'll put the camera back on them so we can watch them eat. Otherwise, thanks for joining me. Well, they've decided they were hungry after all. You can see Pearl, the female. She is eating from the seahorse feeding station. And Captain Jack is looking on, debating whether he wants to join her or not. Thanks for watching.